the message today is you will not suffer. The message today is what? You will not suffer. Part four. Say, I will not suffer. Say it in a minute. Say it like a child of God. It is what you say God will confirm. Say, I will not suffer. Say it one more time. Jesus speaking said, I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. They amplify, I am come that they may enjoy life and enjoy life to the full. I came that they may have and enjoy life. Say enjoyment. Say enjoy. He said, he came for you to enjoy life. Is that your Bible? He said, Jesus, listen. Now, listen. The portion of the Bible you believe is the portion that benefits you. Jesus came for our sins. True? We believe that. He said, I came also not for only sins. I came. Look at it now. Look. You know, if you don't believe it, you enjoy it all. He said, I came that they may have and enjoy. Enjoy, not suffer. That's why I say you shall not suffer. I came that they may have what? And look at your Bible now. I came, read it together. As you as I'm the one that wrote it. Want to go? Did you say you came that you suffer? Say so Jesus came for me to enjoy life. Say it one more time. Suffering ends in your life. It says he gave us all things to enjoy. First Timothy 6 verse 17. B. See the sea path. It says for all things to enjoy. So God has created you so that you can enjoy life. And Proverbs chapter 10 verse 3. The Lord will not suffer thy soul of the righteous to famish. That means to hunger. He said he will not suffer the soul of the child of God to hunger. Hunger will not be your portion. In Psalms 24, 9 to 12, he said, we see not our signs. There is no more any prophet, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. He said, look at the wall. Is there no more prophet? He said, there are prophets. If a land lacks prophet, there will be no prophet. Is there no prophet? He said, there are prophets. He said, oh God, how long shall adversity reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? They look at you, they say, look at church people, poor people. Today is ending. Such words on you will come to an end. Amen. Why would dwell thou thy hand, even the right hand, pluck it out of thy bosom? For God is thy king of old, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. Prophets are constituents of signs and wonders. They are what? It said, believe the Lord your God, it shall be established. Believe his prophet, so shall he. So your prosperity is tied to a prophet. A prophet is God's mouthpiece. Is God's what? Who speaks God's counsel and it comes to pass? He said, believe him. Believe who? Now listen, with all humility, do you believe me? Yes, if you don't believe me, then you can't prosper. I didn't say so, God says so. God said, believe him, you will be established. But believe me, then you will prosper. I decree today, suffering has ended in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Two of you are pastors, come. You'll be saying that if you don't believe me, it won't work. I'm going to be very practical in my teaching. Come. Give them a microphone. There are pastors, two of them, walking with me. Just for demonstration's sake. You, you enter my bedroom, you enter everywhere, but don't believe me. You, you, you've never entered my bedroom. You enter my bedroom. Closeness does not determine... Proximity is not connectivity. You, for demonstration's sake, in your heart, don't believe me. Say, after the entire bedroom, what did they happen? You, when I pray now, believe. Look at me, come. Two of them are pastors, true? This one, don't believe me for now, just for demonstration. Don't believe me. Say, after all, even this morning, I may arrange your suit. <laughs> but don't believe me. After all, any way you do, talk your own. Then you believe me. You are not even close. You don't even know where my bedroom looks like. You've not entered it, but you believe me. You, you, they enter. Enter everywhere. I bring my shoe, bring my stocking, but don't believe me. Now this is how it happens. He said, believe the Lord your God. He said, what? Believe his prophet. For demonstration, make sure your heart is closed. Don't believe me. You, believe me. See what will happen. Now, I'm praying for two of them as pastors. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
The man who did not believe, did anything happen to him? No. But he's very close to me. It's very... So it's not how close you are to somebody that means the blessing. It's not, it's not proximity, it is connectivity. You can, be, you can even answer the same Sunday with me. It does not mean you'll be blessed. If you don't believe me. He said, believe the Lord your God, you'll be established. For prosperity must believe a man sent by God. If I never believe, I'll have been broke today. If I never believe, I'll be sure best that I would have been broke. It was Albert the who told him, go! Before the need, your supply is with you. It's captivity torn. Now, you believe me. You'll see the same effect. Believe me now. Now, remove your heart and believe. Believe now. Two of you believe. You two believe. Now, in the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. The moment you believe, it happen. Now, I speak over you. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. This is the last day you go through that hardship. Amen. What is happening in the nations where you are will never happen to you. Amen. God will accept you and lift you up. Amen. You will never go through hardship anymore. Amen. The ladder, your amen, you have it done. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be saying, I will not suffer. Will not suffer. Who are prophets? They are agents of prosperity. They are agents of what? Prophets are agents of prosperity. Abraham prospered supernaturally through the blessing proclaimed upon him by Melchizedek. God said to him, I will bless thee and that shall be a blessing. But it did not happen until Melchizedek pronounced it on him. In Genesis chapter 14, 18 to 20, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thy enemies to thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. It was Melchizedek who spoke over Abraham's life. Until he spoke, Abraham blessed did not walk. And speaking over you, your life will go forward now. Amen. You will make progress from now. Amen. Things will turn and get better. Amen. Closed doors will be open. Amen. You will never go through any hardship anymore. Amen. God will turn the captivity and bless you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From scriptures we discover that prophets are used to change the destinies of men and women. There was a woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. This woman was indebted to her husband. 1 to 7. All of you are owing. You know these period things are so tough that many people are owing. Through? Glory to God. You are owing landlord. Some of you are owing banks. Some of you are owing individuals. Some of you, even because you can't get cash, you are owing. Through? You buy credit here, buy credit here, buy credit here. You don't know where to pay from. To take, God will make a way out. He said, now nah, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets to unto Elijah saying, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. So that you fear God does not mean poverty has no respect. This man was a man of God. Anointing does not mean that poverty will go. He said, thou fear the Lord. And the creditor has come to take unto him my two sons to be born. That means the man... You know, today they use house as collateral. He used his two children as collateral. You know how you, you, know, you sign, you say, if I don't pay, take my this, take my... This man used his two children. He was a man of God, though. He was a man of God. I asked her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what has thou in the house? And she said, thy handmaid had not anything in the house, save a pot of what? He said, I don't have anything. Then said he, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Verse 4. And when that's coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. And thou shalt put. shut the door it simply means close your ears. This period, they will mock you. Hey, close your ears. They will tell you if they go to church, oh boy, how it is they talk for you like this. Have you ever been mocked before? If you have never been mocked, then you are not a child of God. Every child of God, before God will make you, men will mock you. They will look at you and say, if you truly you are going to a church, why is life like this? Can't serve, no you change. 
See you now. He said, church, 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 church. If they will, they will, if some, even in church now, some people will mock you. Some people who are funny will mock you even in church. They look at them, lay, lay. They go to church, church, every morning, get up, go to church, nothing with this. For how many years don't go to church? Nothing. My tell, I tell you today, those who mock you before this is over, they will eat on your table. Yeah. They will eat on your table. Yeah. I'm speaking as a man sent by God. Those who mock you will eat on your table. This hard time, you give them money to eat. Amen. If you believe the word of God, say amen. amen. God is saying, shut your ears. Shut your what? Yes. To side talks. That shall set aside that with food. Now verse, man, verse five. Then she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there's not yet a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Verse 7. Finally, let's do it together. And she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil. Pay thy death. And leave thou and the children of the earth. I decree everyone at the crossroad where you are owing, I decree a miracle death cancellation. God uses men and women to what? To cancel death of men. Elisha, if you read that scripture, where we read, did not partake of the miracle oil. Did he? It was all for the widow. Who got all? The widow. Did Elisha took the oil? No. I'm not speaking because I want something from you. I'm speaking because I'm sent by God. Now, in case you are at the crossroad, you are indebted, you are confused. Today, God will make a way out. God will make a way out. A woman from another church long ago came to meet my wife, know the story. You know, there's a way you'll be confused, you wear slippers like this. Have you been confused like that? Where children do it. You see children wear like this. They say, mommy, you say, you change your leg, my friend. Duma was confused. She wore left for right, right for left. Her husband was indebted to the neck. As at that time, the bank was to take their only house. The bank was to take everything they had. So she ran. She was panting. He said, sir, my husband is owing the bank. They want to take everything we have. What do we do? She was crying. I said, what is the problem? He said, my husband is owing. Everything we have, they want to take. I said, look at 2 Kings chapter 4. And I read. Read 2 Kings 4. After I finished, I said, go for your sake. Go intervene. As she left, the man was in Abuja, confused. Somebody just met him. I said, that's an OED. Ah. Billions as at that time. One breakthrough, he cleared his debt. <laughs> that man is a multi-billionaire. From one breakthrough. From one what? Somebody at the crossroad hearing me now. Your testimony will be bigger than that. Amen. Your testimony will be bigger than that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what you're going through. I decree that death will never, God will never allow you to see shame. Amen. There will be a supernatural intervention. Amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Number two, they are agents of restoration. They are agents of what? Israel was in Egypt <laughs> 400 years. It was called in Bano. Nothing happened. 30 years again, nothing happened. Then Exodus chapter 12. A man emerged on the scene called Moses. And God used him. 35, 36. And Israel did according to the word of Moses. They did according to the what? And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Now, listen. You won't understand it. Understand the Bible very well. They borrow. Listen. They gave them favor. Now, Egyptians... Had, we are the owners of the wealth. True? Israel was going out of Egypt. How do you borrow somebody who is not coming back? Your economy. Listen, listen. Get it, get it clear. <laughs> get it clear. Somebody is going away as a slave. And you are borrowing him your whole resources. Oh, no. There are some testimonies we can't share in the open. There are members of this church. Who, the people who say, quo, hand over all their wealth to them. You don't have to be in government to partake of government. Do you hear me? 
You don't have to be a politician to control the economy. Joseph was not an Egyptian, but he ruled Egypt. <laughs> you don't have to come from River State to control River State. I'm speaking to someone. I decree Egyptians will hand over their wealth to you. <laughs> I am speaking to someone that Egyptians will hand over their wealth to you. They will tell you to control it after this moment. In the name of Jesus. Are you the one who believes it? Somebody who is in this service, another person will do the whole work and hand over to you. You will control that economy in the name of Jesus. You will control the economy in the name of Jesus. In these hard times, they will say to you, you will control it in the name of Jesus. The louder your amen, you have something. Moses was the one who spoke and God honored. He said, and by prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by prophet, he was preserved. Isaiah 12 verse 13. He said, and they lent to them so and they spoiled the Egyptians. You know, that way, that place, they spoil. There is a way God will favor you, you spoil people. He said, boy, let's spoil you a little. I've not gone to our test, they put on it, on the, they say, let's spoil you a little. They are test a lot, they say, let's spoil you a little. That means they will make you comfortable. Now, there's a way, well, okay, let me, hear, let me say this. <laughs> Egyptians, we are magicians, we are what? And the reason why Pharaoh pursued the Israelites was not because they should come and serve them, it was because of, remember that the wealth has been transferred to them. He said, wow, the whole of our economy has been given to these people. When God wants to bless you, he turns the counsel of even your enemies to foolishness. You see a man will do everything and say, come, come, come. Manage this, my company. Manage it. Go, make it, manage it. At that time, be smart enough to know that God is favoring you. He said, manage it. You'll be laughing. He said, this is my time. There's anything you like, do. Bring me some more money. Bring me to my own share. But manage. Someone will get contract and ask you to execute it. I said, this week will not pass. Somebody will have church testimony. In the name of Jesus. Let me show you something. If you read Exodus 3, 21, 22, you see it. And God gave them what? Favor. You'll be the next person that will be favored. In this year of supernatural favor, the next person to be favored shall be you. As you appear in that office, as you appear in that court embassy, God will favor you. That amen is too weak. God will favor you. As you appear in that embassy, they will favor you. No question, it will be just go. If you believe it, say amen. In Ezra chapter 4, verse 23, 24, 5, 1 and 2. I don't know, as some of you know, your life now looks taunted. No progress, no shifting, one level, but there will be a change. Amen. Shall we read verse 23 together? One, you, you, you chew your tongue in some places, but try. One, two, go. Let's read together. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Some of you have never read this part of the Bible before. Now, if you, that's what you're saying, they stop the work by force. There are forces that stop your progress, hope you know. Then cease the work of the house of God, which is at Joseph. Then cease. Some of you, nothing. For five years now, <coughs> one year now, <coughs> nothing is working. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of power. Not everything may come. For some of you now, since this policy came, you've not got even 500 naira. Everything, everything ceased, no flow. But look at chapter 5. If you know the scripture, that was the end. Chapter 5 is a continuation. Say what? Verse 1. Then the prophets. Then they what? Haggai the prophet. And Sagai, the son of Edo, prophesied. All the prophets did was to speak unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Verse 2. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, and Yeshua, the son of Josadek, 
and began to build. The work ceased. The work what? Then as they were speaking, they began to build. As they were speaking, things were beginning to change. Build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. The work of a prophet to help you is not to do physical things. It's to speak over your life. Ooh. What am I doing now? I am helping you. What am I doing? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? This is the last day you'll be at the same spot. I command whatever sat on your destiny broken now. I decree. If they could not stop Jesus from coming out of the grave, all the demons could not stop him. Even the grave Jesus is Lord. My soul don't magnify. I decree every demon that's kept you down will lose his grief from you. The forces in hell could not stop Jesus. He rose. He rose. The same power of resurrection is at work right now. All the forces that sat on you to bring you down, they will clear for you to rise. In the name of Jesus. Everything that made your family to stand still is breaking out for you to go forward. Whatever sat on your destiny, in the name of Jesus, this is the last day. You will rise in the name of Jesus. You will rise in the name of Jesus. You will rise in the name of Jesus. Nothing can keep you on the same spot again. The last you ever suffered will be the last. So I'm rising. Confess it. Say it. He said, when men are cast down, then that shall say that is a lift. Say, I will rise. Say it again. Say it that minute. Say it again. Say it. There are agents of breakthrough and progress. The agents of what? Breakthrough and progress. In 1 Kings 17, <laughs> 8 to 16. The word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zelophat, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded the widow woman to sustain. I have commanded her. May you hear God's voice. And he arose and went to Zelophath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, garden of sticks, take note. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it. As she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in the hand. Do you hear what the woman said here? And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and, I'm, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. The way some people are, hard, you know, Nigeria today, some people are naked. They tear their clothes even in punk, true? The woman said, that's a condition I find myself, I'm going to die. But Elijah said, I'm a man of God sent by God. Your story will be different. Elijah said unto her, fear not. Say, I refuse to be afraid. Do as thou hast said, but make for me thereof a little cake first. And bring it to me, and after, make for thee and for thy son. Now look at here what he said. He said, Thus saith the Lord. There was no Bible then. God was speaking through them. Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil you fail until the day that the Lord sent it rain upon the earth. And as she went and did according to, the, according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat what? 16 for another. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil you fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Am I speaking God's word? He said, family you shall love. Am I speaking God's word? God who fed Elijah at the brook of Jared doesn't have a problem. 
He wanted to rescue that woman. That was why he sent him. It's not because he wanted God. No. God knew that he needed somebody to be used to bring her out. Because if God wanted to feed Elijah, he fed him before. So feeding him would not be a problem. Now listen carefully. I'm speaking over your life. Things will turn. You will not suffer hunger. You will not beg. Life will turn. God will make a way. In the midst of this hardship, God will differentiate you. You will keep rising. You will keep being blessed. You will prosper. Beginning from this service. In the name of Jesus. Things will turn. Things will get better. You will not shed tears. You will not see shame. God will make a way for you. In the name of Jesus. From this mouth, I've seen multi billionaires born. From this mouth. A young man met me in a city called Warren. And we were driving in the car. And I turned and said, you know what? You need to stop the banking work and own your bank. He said, Papa, what did you say? I said, stop and own your bank. To own bank is meant from working in the bank. I said, you can't be working all your life in the bank now. Own your bank. No sign. He never thought of it. I said, stop. Own your bank. And as I began to talk to him, before he started, he came down. He gave thanks here with some of his colleagues. And then all of a sudden, he came and said, pray for me. I said, now go. Your bank become the bank of the banks. We went to dedicate it. Today is the fastest growing regional bank. Fastest. In terms of income and everything. Now, listen. <laughs> it is with mouth we God gave us. Moses used rod. My own is my mouth. Now, I don't know the level you are, but I decree you will rise. <laughs> that business, that career, that thing God placed in your hand, before this year is over, will be an amazement to the world. Be a surprise to the world. Those who knew you, who thought your life is finished, they will see God lift you high. In the name of Jesus, you will not die in the midst of your days. You will not live for another to eat. The Lord will call me, bless you in the name of Jesus. Let me say this to you. Your story has changed. Amen. Your story has changed. Amen. Your story has changed. Amen. Somebody here, I'm speaking to you, will be among the top richest men in the world. Amen. By all standards, anywhere in the world, your name will be mentioned. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Very soon, the world will park cars. You will park your own jet. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say to somebody, I will, not I will not suffer. Turn again to somebody. In case you better not say to yourself, I will not suffer. Nothing will make me suffer. Make All that your son has pronounced, I believe, I believe it. I've declared it. It becomes my portion. I will, I will not suffer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Don't allow the hardship to stop you from your covenant practice. From your covenant what? They say hardship, then you don't pay tithe. Don't say hardship, you don't give quality offering. It's as long as the earth remaineth. Sit time and harvest shall not what? Cease. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. You know why? If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1 8 and Genesis 8 22. It is important to note that we cannot pray our way into financial fortune. Prayer cannot stop hardship. No. You can only give your way into financial dominion. Your tithe at this end time is not blessing God or His church, it's to bring you out of captivity. It's how open the windows of heaven. So the windows of heaven are open over your head. Is that true? Receive grace to be connected in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
You can only give your way out of poverty. You cannot beg your way out of poverty. Because blessing flows through what you give, not through what you beg. It's more blessed to give. No one can pray his way out of poverty. You can only give your way into prosperity. And let me say, you cannot also fast your way into out of poverty. You can only sacrifice your way into financial fortune. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. If the boy never gave his small five loaves and two fishes, there wouldn't have anything to multiply. There must be a point of contact for God to lift you. If you have nothing in your hand, God has nothing to multiply. Are you getting what I'm saying? The boy with the little fish and the two, two fishes with five loaves, it was what he gave to Jesus that Jesus multiplied. I did something, of just this service. I changed my offering. I changed my what? I changed my offering because I know in the times of hardship is when you sow more. I know the principle. So I had to give seven figures in every service. In every what? Every service. The whole five services. Because I want to shift my level. Do you want to come out of poverty? Yes, sir. Don't reduce your offering. Let me tell you, don't reduce your... This time, because the more you plant, the more you harvest. The best time to plant is the time of hardship. So in the midst of hardship, God will bring... I will bring the harvest, it's not your... It's as long as this age, when the seed time and what? It is a prayer time. It is a fasting time. Seed time. There must be seed before there must be harvest. So here. That's how it works. So don't say, hey, this hard time, I'm going to reduce my offering. I don't even come to church. I go day for house. You're not helping yourself. Oh. You must practice the covenant of giving and receiving. Great is your future. In the midst of this time, God distressed waste. God distressed what? The prodigal son wasted all that he had. And he went into... Wanting. Luke 15, 11 to 32, but verse 14. Scriptures classify the waster as slothful. You know what waste is? Waste is spending without budgeting. That's what I mean by waste. Waste is what? When they say you are wasting, is you are spending without budget. You are spending without what? Then you are wasting. Spending without budget is waste. E.g., for instance, you have a fleet of cars without a personal house. Or investment you can fall back on in the future. That is a waste. That's what? Then you're wasting resources without knowing. You have a fleet of what? Cars, but you don't have a house. You don't have any investment. Then you are wasting because the cars can't bring you money. But you have to invest in something that will bring money for you to buy cars. Are you getting me now? Be more investment conscious than just spending and spending. Be more investment worth than just spending and spending. Be more investment conscious than just spending and be more investment conscious. Don't say I need to buy this. I need to buy this. Now say I think. I need to invest. I need to what? I must invest this. When money enters your hand, take investment before spending. Prudent people take investment. Don't spend everything in your hands. When money comes in, invest in the kingdom of God first. Invest in something that will bring what? Profit before you start enjoying life. Let me give a practical illustration. When this ministry started, for nine years, I did not travel. Not because there was no money to travel. But if I travel that time, it will affect the income. So we invested in our future. In what? Our future. Before I started traveling. Do you understand how it is now? After nine years, I could travel to anywhere. Today I can travel to anywhere. The income has grown to a point where the investment of this commission is too heavy. You know the investment? In the people. In what? The people. Today, Investment is in, in the people. Now, I can go to anywhere in the world. Is that not true? It will affect the income. But if I started that from the beginning, what will happen? It's time we crash. When you are growing, be more investment conscious. Especially now, where everything is tight. Don't just go, buy shoe, buy this. No! Invest in your brain. Invest in your academics. Invest in your growth. Invest in your business. Put money into your business. The business will what? Grow. Then the, from the profit, you start spending. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Don't just go for pleasure when there's no investment. Don't buy cars when you don't have business. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Those I like to live in good house. Nobody would not like to live in good house. But the good house will not bring money. I like to buy a good car. No problem. Will the good car bring money? No. So first of all, invest the good car money into your business. This time, everybody needs to invest. Are you hearing me? Be more investment conscious than spending and spending. Say here. Say here. And if you watch the rich, they are very stingy. True? You know why they are stingy? You know why you say rich man, they're stingy? Ask why. He works for the money. So he does not waste it. Rich people don't spend money. Check very well. They don't spend money anyhow. It is those around them who waste money. Either their children, their colleagues. But the people who have the money, they are very prudent. You know the reason? He works for it. And if you have ever worked for money, you will never toy with it. Because you know how painful it is to earn the money. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Lift the right hand and say, Father, I will not be a waster. I will be prudent. I will invest into my future. In the name of Jesus. And all that your son have said, all the prophetic words shall be fulfilled in my life. In 30 seconds, began to declare in the name of Jesus. All the prophetic words shall be fulfilled. All the prophetic words shall be fulfilled in my life. All the prophetic words shall be fulfilled in my life. In Jesus' mind name. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Go! And the fire on you today will keep burning. The door God has opened for you, no devil will shut it. Those who came sick, you are pronounced healed. In the name of Jesus, your strength is restored. Your health is renewed. Your life shall go forward. There shall be peace. It is well with you. In Jesus' name.